Big right here. Obviously, only a few days away from an, a massive pay-per-view here in the UK. It's been obviously a while since we've had a pay-per-view here on this part of the world. So I guess where are the emotions and only a few days removed? Um, it just feels like uh, any other fight to me, to be fair. Uh, obviously, I'm happy to be back fighting here in the UK. It's been a while since I've fought in the UK. So, um, and actually, you know, I haven't, f I haven't fought in front of a, a crowd as well for a while. So um, I'm looking forward to that because, uh, you know, that's what I got in the game for, you know, uh, for the, you know, the crowd and to feel the uh, energy and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to fighting in front of the UK fans. So when they announced that this fight card was happening here, did you ask to be on this card or did it just work out that when they approached you? It just worked out. They approached me. They approached me with a, um, a an opponent and, and a date. And, um, you know, it worked out that, um, you know, I fought in November and I'd be ready for March. So it just worked out perfect. So what do you make of your opponent, Malcolm? Obviously coming off a loss, but he is a name in this division. He's been around for a while. What do you make of him as an opponent? Yeah, man, I think he's um, a good opponent. Um, I think um, a lot of people kind of underestimated him before his last fight, um, but went out against uh, Makhev and had a, a, a decent performance. Um, you know, he had a full rear naked choke. I think if there was 10 more seconds, he could have finished it. He suplexed him. Um, you know, anyone who's beat Malcolm is, is ranked. So... You know, the guys who have beat Malcolm are more ranked top guys. So, And he's got um, a few wins over some prospects. So I think he's a good fighter. Um, he's got good, um, you know, jiu-jitsu. He's a black belt. Um, he's got good, uh, you know, bit wild striking. But, he, you know, he's got some decent striking. But um, I don't think... Um, I think anywhere the fight goes, I can finish him and, and do a proper good job on him as well. So... Um, I predict a finish. Um, I don't think he'll take the same same sort of beating as the last guy took. I think he'll fold up. Um, but skills-wise, he's a good fighter. Well, speaking of Muhammad Mahayev, he was in here earlier and he said he saw you at the in, in the hotel. He said something to you and nothing was said back. Has it been weird being around him this fight week? Well, the, the kid's just an idiot, isn't he? I mean, he's coming over to me trying to fight me in the hotel. I mean, but he don't want to fight me in the cage. You know, he's he's he's, he's fighting a debut guy. You know what I mean? He, he was like, I won't fight you because you lose against Allen and all this. Like, But then he wants to fight me in the hotel. Like, what is this guy doing? He's a total uh, idiot. You know what I mean? Like, So, you know... If there's such a problem with me, then why don't you just fight me then in a, in a f cage fight? You know what I mean? We can't be fighting here. People are going to break it up. People are going to get in trouble. What's going to happen if I suck him in his face when he comes and closes the distance? All, all, you know, I've already had staff complain about me before, so they're going to be complaining, oh, you knocked <coughs> Makhev out and all this in the back, and they're all going to moan at me. But you know what I mean? So and I'm the one who's painted as the bad guy all the while. But yeah, he's coming over to me. He's like, bro, like, man, relax, back up, bro. You know what I mean? You take a step closer. I'm going to knock you clean out. You know what I mean? But he's an idiot. But I think if there's so much of a problem, then either fight me or turn up at my gym or something, because he's in Birmingham all the while anyway, and I'll fucking bang you out there. No problem, baby. But, you know, why are you trying to fight me in the hotel? It makes no, no sense. You know what I mean? Like, because. Then his fight's going to be off. Then my fight's going to be off. And it's going to be, we've trained all this time for nothing. Dumb kid. So when they announced both of you were going to be on this card, did you kind of expect some sort of run-in with him at this hotel? Yeah, well, I've had multiple, you know, from the years, because obviously he was an amateur when I was amateur and that. And, um, you know, he said, oh, I'm going to hit you with a chair. You know, I'm going to fucking do this and I'm going to do that. So, you know, when you threaten violence, when you see somebody, you know, obviously it puts you on your toes. You're like, all right, then. If he's going to come at me, I can't let him close the distance. Boom, he's going to be out of there. So, you know, I expect, you know, the security to be a bit more on point. Um, and that because this geezer, I don't want to have to bang him out. You get me? Look, I'm get <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, last one for me. Can I ask your thoughts on the main event uh, between Kamaru and Leon? How do you think that plays out? 
Yeah, man, um, you know, I think uh, the altitude had a bit more of an effect on Leon than what he, what, what he actually would have thought of. Uh, Leon's been looking good in training because obviously we sh we share similar coaches, um, you know, like Bradley Hill for the Jiu Jitsu and Camby for the wrestling, and then Johnny Strength and Conditioning. So we've been going to like the track together and doing our our, our runs and our cardio, and he's looking really fit and and uh, really strong. So um, I expect him to put on a dominant performance. Jake, just over here. So you bounced back from defeat last time out. Do you feel like you got your career back on track in a way? How, how was it your mind after the loss? How did you react to it? You know, it was hard, um, you know, to lose, you know, especially over over three rounds. I'd, I'd, I'd never thought in my life anyone could beat me over three rounds. I've, you know, anyone can get caught and whatever, and that happens in it. But to be beaten over three rounds was a bit of a shock. So, um you know, it, I had to put some things right in my game. And also I got injured during the fight, in the first, like, two minutes of the fight. So it was like I couldn't train and it was just doing my head in. But, you know, I've grown a lot from it. And uh, what I think, what, what I always say to myself is God's plan and it was meant to happen. So, and I've become a better fighter because of it. And with this Malcolm Gordon fight, do you want to push yourself towards the rankings? Is that what you're, you're aiming to do? Yeah, well, I ho well I hope um, you know with with a win against Gordon that I get a ranked opponent because, like I said, anyone who's beat Gordon is ranked. So you know, like you just said, Markev's beat him. He's number twelve in the world now. You know, uh, Albazi beat him. He's what number seven, and you know, so it's like, yeah, I think with a win, I either, I either get ranked or fight a ranked opponent. Just back to your contender series and Dana White, you know, took a, you said he took a chance and you, you're really grateful for that. Do you think putting on a big performance on this pay-per-view is a way of sort of showing him he was right just yet again as well? Well, to be fair to you, like, like I say, I come and perform and put on entertaining fights, near, you know, every time. Even when I've been in a fight, what's gone like the distance when I fought Shanks for the belt on Cage Warriors and when I fought Zulu for the belt. It was because they was hanging on, surviving, just grabbing my, my hand, trying to stop the choke. Them the, was the guys who made the fights boring. I come out and I put on entertaining fights. Watch my last fight. Yeah, amateur, he's a Golden Gloves boxing champ. All right, I said to him, yo, first man to take a backward step. He's a punk bitch. Yeah, and we just stood toe to toe with a boxer. I could have took him down whenever I wanted to. Same with, with Reposo, I took him down and just submitted him and got him out of there. You know, I come and put entertaining fights on. When I triangled um, Candelero, I wanted to cave his head in. And this is the thing, like, you know, your boy and that Mark Kiev is all popular and shit. But he's a crotch sniffer. You know, he's going to sit on you for three rounds, lie on you, and just do nothing. So, um, my, my fight will be entertaining and it'll be a good performance. It'll be an entertaining fight. The only way it wouldn't be an entertaining fight, which I don't expect this off Gordon, is if he just tries to survive and hold on or do something like that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Go ahead, Jake. Um, you mentioned it's going to be the first time in a while that you've actually fought in front of a crowd. The fact that that crowd is right here in your home country, how much would that mean to you to walk out in front of a packed house at the O2? Yes, yeah, it means everything to me. You know what I mean? I love to, I love to fight. I love to compete. This is, what, this is what I do. Obviously, I feel like a gladiator when the crowd's there. You know, it's all for me. I'm a you know, modern-day gladiator. Yeah, I, I thrive off the crowd. You know, it has been a while since I fought in front of a crowd, but, you know, no one can help that with the COVID and whatever uh, has happened. And, um, you know, and, and injuries forcing me out of fights, which would have been in crowd. But I'm really looking forward to it. You mentioned having a, a few fights fall through. You know, you've had a few... A few uh, you know, you could have had a few more fights on your UFC record by now if a few, a few things had gone your way and fights hadn't gone through. How keen are you to be really active in 2023? How many fights are you looking to get in this year and build that momentum? Yeah, well, you know, um, I come out fresh. If I come out fresh, you know what I mean? Even, even when I batter the guy, even when I punch the guy up, it, you know, you could come out the fight injured. So I don't know, what, I don't know what, what, what's going to happen, but I, ho I hope to be able to fight active, you know what I mean, uh, at least three, three fights a year, so that's what I'm hoping for, but all I'm focused on is my opponent in front of me, Malcolm Gordon, because he's, 
he's a, a dangerous guy. And to throw back to this, this brewing sort of uh, rivalry you've got with Mo, and the fact he's already fought Malcolm, is he the logical next opponent for you? Is he someone that you're going to call for on the microphone if you get that opportunity after your fight? Yeah, but he he won't he won't take that fight. He won't take that fight. Um, it's been going on for years when we was kids, and and that, and I just don't see that fight happening. To be fair, but I don't even know if the UFC had put it together because obviously we two UK guys, um, and um, you know, thought to be you know prospects. Maybe I'm not as thought to be as much as a prospect because I lost my debut but after this fight I think people are going to put me up there more um, but I think if the time to make it was probably on this card because um, you know he's fighting a debut kid which uh, you know he's probably a good guy you know and, and that he's probably a good opponent but I just don't understand why why did you just put me and him together and get it done now you know what I mean um, you know especially because the hype of me has dropped a little bit, so they may, maybe think, oh, you know, you know, JK is so much of a hard fight than before. They could have put it together now, but they didn't. So I don't, I don't know. Last one from me. Um, obviously, you say you're, you know you're focused on on Malcolm. You know he's a dangerous opponent. He's been in there with good opposition in the past. Break down for us how your 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 most likely path to victory. How do you see how do you see this fight finishing on Saturday night? Like I said. I can finish him anywhere. Realistically, you know, he's going to try and grapple me. Um, and if you don't think that, he will be trying to grapple me once I crack him. Uh, you know, I feel like I can finish him on the feet or on the ground. Um, you know, I, I fight smart, but most of my fights are finishes. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm entertaining, so... And he comes out and he puts the pressure on. He ain't like a guy who who, who cowards away or whatever. He comes and brings it on. So, yeah. Jake, down to your left. There's a really good video of you and your youth basically saying that you want to become a UFC fighter. What do you remember of that video when you are blowing out the candles on the cake? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd been, you know... <laughs> For all my life, I was wanting to be a, a fighter in the UFC. So that, like, I was only about nine or ten years old then. and um, But before then, I was dreaming about being a UFC fighter. I hadn't even started training. To, I didn't start training until I was 12 years old. Because uh, my, my parents wouldn't, didn't want me to train, you know what I mean? Because it's dangerous, because, you know, my granddad bucks and my dad bucks. So it's like, they know like, the dangers of fighting. And they didn't really want me to, um, you know, to train or to fight or anything. So, but I, you know, I grew up around fighting, uh, you know, with them being boxers and and with fighting being on the TV a lot. You know, I'd sit next to my my dad and watch the, you know, the old school boxing. You know, uh, the Roberto Duran, Marvin Adler, and stuff like that. And then watch the old school UFCs like the, you know, like the the old old Tito Ortiz and. And and stuff like that. Even like, Tank Abbott was what one one guy I used to like as a kid. But he, he didn't have no skills, but I just used to like him. But uh, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I just grew up around watching the fighting on the telly. So um, you know, I'd been dreaming about it for years. And um, I remember being at school as a kid and thinking, I don't need to listen to this shit. I'm going to be champion of the world one day. And this, I didn't even started training. So I had the ambition without the knowledge. But and now I'm here, so hard work, dedication, and you get here. That's when the sport was, you know, relatively young still. Did you have a lot of those around you kind of advising you against it? Um, not, not really. Like, I had people at school tell me, like, oh, you, would, you, you ain't going to get there. And I had teachers tell me, you know, you, never, you won't even make it to a professional. Um, you know what I mean? And I remember like winning the British Championship in Jiu Jitsu and being like, oh, look, I'm a British champion, Jiu Jitsu. You know, and just like, see, I will get there. Even though that weren't like nothing, but it was like, oh, I'm starting to prove you right. You know what I mean? So I'm starting to prove you wrong. Um, yeah, a lot of people said, you know, 
advise me off it, but yeah, keep doing what I'm doing. Now that you've technically made that dream come true by actually being in the UFC, is the next step really like fulfilling it by actually becoming champion? Yeah, obviously, I'm just taking it fight by fight. Um, winning this fight, hopefully getting the, you know, top 15. Or I don't, I don't mind. I fight anyone in it. Like, you know, I think I've already had like the, probably the harder fights anyway. Um, so I don't really care.